Well, I was supposed to bring Summa, and I realized that y'all are more interested in the athletes than the coaches anyway. Uh, <laughs> but I'm going to have a hard time bringing uh, players in because our practice time is from 8.30 to 10.30 on Monday, Wednesday. And then we all have class in the afternoon, so you're stuck with just me the rest of the year unless, unless something happens. And I had a, had a great story to tell about Summa, but she's not here, and I'm not going to tell that when she's not here. So, uh, <laughs> But anyway, um, let's see, we're coming off a couple of good wins at home. Uh, doesn't get easier, as we know, in the SOCON. You go to the Walford, the defending uh, champions, and they got the best player in the league, Rachel Rose. So, um, you know, but, but it's been good to see some, you know, really tough two losses at Chad and then ETSU and then come home and have some, some pretty, you know, big wins for us. Was there kind of a, a sense, you know, from, from that team that, hey, we started going to in the SOCON, but we also played two of the best teams in the SOCON because it, it seems like, you know, no one was discouraged and obviously you guys rattled off two straight wins since then. Well, one thing about this team, they don't get discouraged. I mean, they, they, they show the most discouragement when they make a play on the court. It's interesting because they'll make miss a shot or miss a defensive assignment and their, their body language is just awful. But then they come in the next day and life is just good. And, and uh, I think that's one thing that resilient about this team is that, that they, they keep fighting. I don't think that we've lost our confidence. I mean, it, it could have been. I've, I've been really trying to be uh, very positive and, and not get into the wins and the loss, not, not into the record, but are we getting better? I mean, we've I think we are, um, and you know, we, we don't even we don't talk about we never have we've never talked about championships that type of thing. We're just trying to get our playing our best basketball come uh, March when we go to Asheville. When I talked to Stacy a couple weeks ago, she said you know one of the, one of her you know favorite things about this place is just the team and that they all love each other. Is that kind of even more rare and maybe impressive to see given like they all came from different places? Rare, <laughs> that's a good word. Um, I think it's very interesting because, you know, I think y'all asked Deja, somebody asked Deja last time she was here about, was it hard to, to you know, to, to, to care about each other? And I think you meant on the court. So they like each other off the court a lot. You know, the, the tricky part is to get them playing as one on the court. You know, we can, you meet somebody for the first time and before you see all their warts and all the negative, like you usually are really good friends with people that you don't know that well sometimes. And then and the longer you're with people, like, ah, they got some stuff I don't really, I don't know if I like it, like that so much. But they really have come together. They care about each other. I think that was evident in our um, uh, last game in Western Carolina when, you know, Maria and uh, Hannah and then Ari, some players that don't get to play as many minutes, you know, they, they all got, everyone on the team scored and there was excitement because everyone comes to practice, puts the same amount of time in. Um, but they do care about each other as human beings. I think they'll be lifelong friends. I hope they can be lifelong uh, champions. Well, that, would be, that would be my goal as well. <laughs> what, um, what, what, are, what are the steps to get in there right now for you guys? I know, you, know you, you, you mentioned that you know, Stacy, take her for example, she has you know, a few big nights and she goes a little quiet. Same thing with a lot of these players. Yeah. A lot of different options. What, what is the key to to get in that half and on a more consistent basis. Well, I think that's exactly right. When offense, offense, you know, unless you're like a Kalia Lawrence, your offense is going to be up and down most of the time. But defense can always show up. I know it's a coaching cliche, but what we've really focused on after the chat and uh, ETSU trip was our defense. And we, we amped it up. We had a hard time guarding uh, – Chattanooga's two best players, two of the top leading scorers in the conference, two of the top three. And so we said, you know what, we've got to play team defense. We can't, you know, we have Summa, and Summa was a defensive player of the year, but she could not guard UT Chattanooga's leading scorer, one-on-one. -on -one. And that was evident. And so we've, we've really been trying, if you see us play, we're, we're just flying around, kind of being reckless, trying to trap more and just be crazy on defense because we're a much better team in transition. Our offensive half-court game, is not as stout as it has been in the past. So we've got to try to find ways to, uh, you know, score. So that's kind of been our mentality. Now it worked these last two games. I don't know if it'll work versus Walford and, and Furman because they're, they're different teams. Kind of to that point, UNC Greensboro really got up and down the floor, really had you guys running, and, you know, it, it seemed at least that you guys were, you know, ready for that. And then you kind of carried over that, that, you know, very quick up and out of kind of play style against Western Carolina. 
Was there kind of a light bulb moment in a way for, for Mercer to, to come out of the gate the way you guys did against UNC Greensboro and then, you know, continue to play that way the next game as well? Well, I, I think it also is about matchups. Like I said, I'm not sure if we can use that same type of strategy versus our next opponent because they all shoot threes. Walford all shoots threes now with – uh, Greensboro and Western Carolina, they, they do not all shoot threes, so that strategy might have worked for them. So we, I think what, what my job is right now is to take each game the first time around, figure out what did and didn't work, and tweak it second time around. And what we did versus Western and uh, UNCG, like I said, we may not do that same thing. One thing we did versus those guys that we played, we, played, we mixed up our defense. You know, we played some man, we played some junk. And we try to keep them on their toes. But my, my main concern in that game was we got up, can we keep a lead? Because how many times did that happen this year where we've gotten up by double digits and we've lost the lead? So I was really proud. Now, I wasn't thrilled with our third quarter because I think we tied Western Carolina in the third quarter. We didn't come out with the same, but uh, we had a great fourth quarter. So. And then last thing for me, after you guys get out to those quick starts, what is the key to keeping a lead? Is it just a focus thing? I think so because we'll do shooting drills where we have a, a number goal and we'll say we'll have five spots. And as we get closer to that goal, we start, or if we're ahead of that goal, our mind gets, you know, it's, it's a mental thing. If we're behind, we start amping it up and trying to, you know, focus more on the shot. So I, I do think it's a mental thing. I think, you know, players, people in general nowadays, their, their attention span is very, very short. Um, and I have to keep reminding them, you know, luckily we have timeouts every five minutes and maybe they can keep their focus for those five minutes. But I do think it's a, you let your guard down. I don't think you do it on purpose at all, but I just think you kind of relax uh, most of the time. A little follow up to that. Is, that. is that something that's being emphasized on, on the road going forward? There's, you know, no room for error, especially against, you know, a team like Walker? It's been mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we talk about losing, and, and I think, that's what, that's what your pre-conference season, that's what the season's all about, is to learn life lessons through it. Like, hey, we, we can go back and talk about, hey, we had this lead, we lost the lead, so we, we can bring stuff up, you know, whether it's good or bad. You know, we're going into an overtime. Hey, we've, we've won both of our overtime games. So you, as a coach, you manipulate the situation and, and bring up past experience to fit the moment sometimes.